Um, yeah, so we're about to go into some pretty heavy um, content where it could get heavy. Um, and we were just talking about how we were going to discuss today and what we were going to discuss. And Storm brought it to my attention that um, we should do a blunt trigger warning um, because the um, the topic is working well in trauma. So we might choose to share something that, or one of our own traumas that might remind viewers of their own. Um, so you know, please make sure that you're um, feeling good about watching the show. If there's something that does trigger you, um, please feel free to um, reach out to your networks. If you need to extend your networks to our network, um, our email is cc and seeth at gmail.com. Um, you know, we're not always going to be able to respond right away. So if you're feeling extremely triggered, please go to your network or, um, you know, call emergency services. Um, what advice do you have for people who are working while in trauma? Um, or what advice do you have for people working with people in trauma? So it's, it's kind of double sorted. Like you could eat, do you have advice for people that are in their own trauma and having to work? And then also what advice do you have for folks who work with others who are in trauma? If that makes sense. So uh, for me, uh, professionally, there are extra duties that I have. Um, and one of those duties are, I have to like report any, um, you know, suspected, uh, self-harm, um, or, uh, child abuse or harm to others. And it's an automatic requirement. Um, people, um, who work in trauma, I think we don't talk about this disclosure enough. And I don't think we talk about how do we help others, um, who who um, who who don't who are in a situation um, but um, don't want the police called say or don't want to be reported for safety or other concerns um, so one thing that I do um, if I suspect that a client is coming to me and I suspect that they may be worried about um, my professional obligations um, is I, I outlined to them that, um, you know, these, these are the things that you can share with me and everything stays here with me and it never leaves. And then I tell them there are other things that you can share with me, but there are things that require me to, to do other things. And I found that helpful um, in my practice, but I also found it useful um, for me as somebody who is surviving trauma when I would talk about it to others and also let them know, like, even though I'm telling you something that may trigger that duty professionally, I want you to know that, you know, there's no plan to do this. I just need to talk about this. There's, there's no, there's no active, uh, you know, I'm not going to leave and, and do something. I, I'm, I have a plan. I'm going to go see a friend. We're going to go do something fun. Um, and I think that we don't talk about how, how we could set those boundaries up with our own like people that we may disclose to and what what that looks like um i think that's really important because um people share with me absolutely all the time on social media on in public and i'm like and i always tell them i'm like stop <laughs> like, just stop like you know um i have a duty and it's there's you can't waive this duty you can't tell me not to do it it's a professional duty and the risk of me not following that professional duty is, is, is that, you know, I, I lose my license potentially. Um, and I, and, you know, I frame it in that way for them. Um, but in terms of, in terms of that, like, I think like, um, you know, setting up, uh, setting up those boundaries for, for yourself and for others and just having a good practice in place, it doesn't have to be, um, a policy that's in your own work, but you can just adopt it in your own practice and you can just tell others, you know, this is what I do with every single client. And I tell them this every single time. And as me professionally, that's what I do because if my, 
regulator, the Law Society of Ontario, the Law Society of Alberta, you know, comes and audits my files, they want to know my practice, right? So I have this practice already set in place. Um, and I think developing those practices now, early on, and it doesn't have to be set in stone by a policy, it could be just your own, right? That's great advice. Um, thank you for that. Um, just even working with people when you set those boundaries um, up and, and let them know and, and allow them to like um, decide what they're going to share, what their boundaries are, um, especially with trauma. And yeah, because like trauma folks, even like myself, we always think if like if you share one thing that like something's going to happen or you're going to jump on it. So if you're like aware of that when going into it, then you can you can share and maybe you do want someone to, to help you um, in, in that matter, but at least you you had that choice. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, also just like working in trauma, if you're in trauma, but you're, you're still having to work just know that like you're not you're not alone. Um, that would be my advice. Um, it, it's it's a normal thing. Like you're not on an island. Someone said that to me earlier. You're not on an island, Cece. Um, yeah, so you're not on an island, folks. Um, if, if you're w working and you're dealing with it and you're having these feelings, it's normal and you're, and you're not alone and you're not different or you're not, um, in, you know, insufficient or, you know, any less than um, someone who's not working through trauma. Um, so there's that, um, I just wanted to add. If any other um, comments as far as like working with folks in trauma or working through your own trauma while at work? Um, I Thanks for sharing that, Cece. Uh, Naomi, I just wanted to um, uh, just appreciate you for a moment um, for just naming boundaries um, and just how difficult that really is. Um, because if you just think about also like, um, <laughs> If you, if I were to unpack my own trauma and to think about why I have boundary issues, to be able to put in boundaries in the first place is like a huge step for anybody. Um, and, you know, I also just loved what you were sharing about how transparent you are, because to me, that is a beautiful gift back to the people that you work with, because it helps them to um, practice consent for themselves. Um, and to me, when I think about consent, I feel like that's a step towards self-determination. And that's really what like we're all working towards, but we have to do that in the smallest ways first before we can really start to imagine what that looks like on a nation basis even sometimes. Um, for me, I'm pretty lucky because um, I just work with a bunch of like uh, rowdy, amazing indigenous young people. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> yeah, also trauma, 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 trauma all over the place. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah. And I, I just think about my, my loves in Winnipeg and, and, uh, they call them so, you know, like trauma babies. Um, but it's like a, it's a beautiful sort of thing to be able to have people that can just understand and hold you through whatever you're going through. Um, and, uh, how, um, I think, like I said earlier, it's like how parts of us are shaped off when we enter into different spaces. And a lot of those times they're like white dominant spaces too. Right. And so, just recognizing the places that um, weren't set up for us anyway in the first place. And, and so I'm just really grateful to be able to build spaces for um, Indigenous people to, to do this in how we work. And so we're community organizers. We work, um, we work around, um, uh, uh, like we work around like in, uh, envisioning radical futures for our communities, working cross-culturally, um, figuring out how do we be allies to one another. Um, and oftentimes that means like talking about some pretty um, uh, tough topics um, and things that really like impact us personally. Um, but we really try to um, like make space for that um, and use our relationships with one another to look after each other. Um, and so it's like when somebody's not really showing up as who we know them to be, um, whether that's in like a distant way or in a, this person's really difficult to work with, <laughs> instead of engaging with that energy, we can actually like come about it differently. Uh, and so there's like um, a way that we can also show up for each other. I think that is, is, is something that is, um, I think, part of what we really strive for and we try to practice in my work. Um, the other thing that comes to mind for me is I want to share some wisdom from 
um, uh, an elder, someone who I'm, I met um, through work, his name is Yitzhak Mendelssohn. And he, um, uh, he's someone who like really has been looking at his family's history of trauma, but also trauma within the context of Israel and Palestine. Um, and he talks about um, his trauma as his, his demons, um, but he talks about it in a way of, um, ah, I wish I could remember this quote I wrote down that he said, but it was just essentially like, um, I'm learning to dance with my demons because they're always going to be there. Um, and if we vilify them, um, we're, we're not in relationship. And so it's like this kind of scary thing to feel the feelings and to be in relationship and to dance with those demons, because it's a completely different energetic field when you can think about your trauma in that way. And he also says, demons love to push buttons um, and buttons are your triggers. <laughs> and so the more that you can learn about your own buttons, um, the more that you can also recognize when your button's about to get pushed. And so then you also be, gain control in a situation and then you can make choices and decisions. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that I think that on my team, we're like really kind of trying to unpack. Uh, when I show up this way, where does that come from? Um, what is the story? What is the moment? What is that piece of my family history that, um, that I've learned to act in this way? Um, and then to be able to name those things allows us to be able to say, how do I want to show up? Who do I want to show up as? Um, and I'm not saying like this is easy stuff that can happen overnight, but it's just a way of that we're like processing this stuff and practicing in really tiny little ways. Um, and uh, yeah, learning to salsa with our demons or whatever dance style that you choose to do. <laughs> I love that metaphor. Um, and then just reframing the way you, you think about like your, your vices, right? I do appreciate that. 